This morning we're going to go over how to update one table from another table. And one common question we get sometimes is if I have data values in one table and I need to update a second table to those data values, how do I go about doing that? So really quickly we're going to create two tables and these tables match. So they have an ID field and they have a name field. Uh, the ID is an int and the names of our car. We're going to insert values into one table and two table. And notice that in one table we have one, two, three, one, and in two table we have one, two, three, but the values, uh, the var car values, one, two, four, and one, two, three do not match. And so just to kind of show the results really fast, we're going to look, and you can see one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the names are one, two, four, and then one, two, three. So what we want to do is we want to set table one's value to uh, the name of the name 4, we want to replace this value right here, 4, uh, with the value of 3. Now our IDs match and that's key. When we're going to update one table from another, we need to make sure that we have some keys that match. <clears throat> Otherwise we're going to have uh, trouble. One second, I'm going to copy and you'll see why I have the drop table commands in a second. Because um, there's actually several ways to do this and I'm going to go over kind of the simple ways to do this and then we'll go over a third way which will kind of be for um, if you have aggregate data. So the easiest way to do this is we're going to update table 1 and we're going to set the name equal to the other name and we're going to do it from, and this is just a basic update statement right here. This would technically be an update statement. For instance, if we did, that would be a basic update statement and we would put our where clause. In this case, what we want to do is we want to update it from another table. So we're going to perform an inner join, and we're going to inner join, forgot to uh, alias this, on o.id equals wid, and this is going to be aliased here. And so we're going to set the name of one table equal to the name of two tables where the ID matches. So you can look at some of the previous videos to see how inner joins work, but essentially we're joining on this field. So where there's so where this field one equals one here, we're going to set the name equal to whatever this table has. So let's do this update statement. And you'll see three rows affected, and then we can look at the tables, and you'll see one, two, three. And that's one of the easiest ways to do that. So let's drop the tables. That's the inner join method. Uh, there's actually a lot of ways to do this. I'm going to go over just three, but I mean, for instance, you could build a temp table and update it from there. You can do all kinds of things. Uh, okay, the next way is we're going to update to one, same syntax. We're going to set name equal to uh, w.name, and we're going to do from this table, and you'll see we're not actually doing a join this time. we're actually selecting from both tables. Now, the reason why I can get away with this is because these tables uh, have an ID field. It's kind of like the join. There's, there's a match on these tables. And so, hold on one second. Let's look at the data before. Let's see, one, two, four, one, two, three. And then let's run the update statement. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's that's another method there. And so we did is we select from, um, we we're looking at both tables here and we're alias, aliasing both tables in the from statement. So there's O and then there's W. And keep in mind, it's kind of like a, a join where you have the alias. Uh, it has a lot of similarities there, but we're still looking, this where clause is, okay, we're gonna match these fields. It's very important, again, it's, it's going to be next to impossible to update a table from another table if there's no matching um, criteria. There was actually a company I worked at and what we would do is we would, um, I believe it was, we would take off a few digits of one of the columns to match on another. And so you may have exceptions like that, but you'll still have to run um, certain queries or I'm sorry, use certain functions to replace. And that's what we're about to do, something similar to that using a common table expression. 
Now, in this example, it's going to seem like we're going overboard on a common table expression. The reason why I want to use this is because occasionally you will have a situation where you need to update one table from another table and the join isn't going to necessarily match. So um, I'll give you an example with like stock data. I may try to join the SPY to um, some unrelated stock just to compare the two. And so what I will do is I'll put the data in a common table expression and then do a join. Or another one would be like um, there was an energy company that they would join meters. And so there was a seven-digit account number in one table, but in another table it was a 15-digit account number. That was the table that they would send the clients. And so what we do is we would take off the seven digits in that 15-digit account number and join that way. So, um, But in this case, again, it's going to seem a little ridiculous to do, to go uh, through all this and do. But we're going to select star from, from table two, and then we're going to update table one. And you'll see the similarity in syntax here. And we're going to set name equal to name, and we're going to do from Let's check the data before. One, two, four, one, two, three. And let's run our common table expression. And let's check the data. And again, the common table expression also works very well for if you have any type of aggregate data, functions. It really simplifies things. That way you don't have to use a uh, temp table. A lot of people ask me, like, when is the time that I use a temp table versus a common table expression? And my answer to that is use a common table expression when you only have like one update, one insert, one delete, one select. If you, and a join basically, if you have a lot of joins on a temporary set of data and in multiple queries, let's say you have eight select statements in your view or eight select statements, not in your view, but eight select statements in your stored procedure and you're combining it on a subset of data, that's when you want to use a temp table that has uh, indexes and indexed on like the columns that are involved in the joins. And the reason why is because um, a common table expression, you will be putting it together each time. And if you're just doing that once, no big deal. No reason to go through the whole process of building a temp table and inserting data and indexing the columns. But if you're going through it eight times, yeah, it, it's it's actually a useful uh, task to go ahead and build a temp table. And as you'll see, this common table expression updates it. And like I said, I use this on an update or an insert a lot when it's like aggregate data or there's a function applied, uh, those things. Common table expressions are very useful for that. So that's one of the, those are just three ways. Again, there are other ways, probably even faster ways, if you look into it to update um, data from one table to another. But that's just three examples of how you can do that. You can use a join. Um, just make sure that the fields match.